hello people and welcome to my channel audio video me in today's video I'm going to explain to you about parametric EQ and graphics EQ and where exactly they sit in the audio signal chain and why do we use them uh, during the video conversation I'm going to refer parametric EQ as PEQ and graphics EQ as GEQ okay uh, let's start with PEQ uh, PEQ sets off to the head gain or microphone input gain or mic preamp uh, in the signal chain. PEQ is defined as a filter tool and falls in spectral plug-in range in studio environment. It is used to cut or boost the dB level of the center frequency above or below 0 dB in spectrum range of 20 Hz to 20 kHz uh, to achieve the desired coloration of the sound. Most of the PEQs, they have three to seven bands. This particular one has four bands. The three main controls on PEQs are Q factor knob, frequency knob, and gain knob. The frequency knob is used to select the center frequency in the spectrum range of 20 Hz to 20 kHz. The Q factor knob determines the ratio of the center frequency to bandwidth horizontally on the axis. Now, the higher the Q value number, the narrow the bandwidth. The lower the Q value number, the wider the bandwidth. Okay, what I mean by that. So, let's say I select a frequency 2.5K. Now, I want to... Uh, cut it by minus 5 dB but also what I want is I want a bit wider uh, bandwidth so it has effect on the neighboring frequencies as well so what I'll do using the Q value I'll decrease the number and then on the gain I'll just apply minus 5 dB if I just want not to affect the neighboring frequencies, I can just simply increase the Q value and you can see that now the bandwidth is narrow. Q factor value and bandwidth, they are not identical. I have provided a link so you can do your own research and uh, this article is the simplest method I have found on the net to understand the Q value and the relationship between Q factor and the bandwidth. And obviously now I've explained you what the gain knob does. It takes a lot of uh, practice and, and experience to apply parametric EQ in live and especially in studio environment. Now I have provided a link uh, that explains the parametric EQ in the simplest method uh, possible and it has a lot of detail about parametric EQ. Now there is another form of parametric EQ called shelving EQ. Basically shelving EQ is high pass filter and low pass filter. So in this instance if I want to apply high pass filter like let's say To a channel I just go here and apply high pass filter so basically the frequency range of high pass filter is 80 Hertz so anything below 80 Hertz is not gonna be output in the signal chain 81 Hertz and above is gonna be output same applies to low pass filter and uh, you can just apply low pass filter and select a frequency from where you want to start like let's say I want to start at 17k and here I've applied the low pass filter so no frequencies above 17k will be part of the audio signal let's talk about the graphics EQ now and uh, let me bring up a graphics EQ this is a graphics EQ. This is a 31 band graphics EQ falling between 20 Hz to 20 kHz. Uh, graphics EQ is a filter tool as well and it falls in spectral plug-in range of studio environment. 
GEQ is used to fine tune the overall mix and bring out the feedback in a certain room or a venue. The idea behind GEQ is not to cut or boost the center selected frequency too much. Uh, okay, let's say I have a drum kit and I have assigned five microphones to that drum kit. Now instead of applying individual graphics EQ to that drum kit microphones, I can add all those five microphones to a mix and then I can assign a graphics EQ to that mix. So that's exactly what I've done. So in order to illustrate that, let's say, let's get back to the channel input. So like, let's say I select channel one, two, like one, two, three, four, five, five microphones I've selected one to five for drums. So let me select channel one here and let's say, you know, I've selected aux five or mix five as my group for all my uh, drum microphones. So all these five microphones, I'll send it to mix five or aux five. Then what I'll do is this, I'll go to the rack and I'll assign a graphics EQ to aux five or mix five. So there you go. Now after assigning the graphics EQ, I can just make some changes to the drum kit. Like let's say something like this. So I've applied this graphics EQ to the drum kit microphones. Now any signal that travels in and out of mix 5 or aux 5 is going to be filtered by the graphics EQ. Uh, now earlier on I was referring to one third of octave. What I mean by that? So if you look here, the first knob, the first fader is 20 hertz and the second fader is 25 hertz. Now the distance in bandwidth between the 20 hertz fader and 25 hertz fader is one third octave. So the distance in bandwidth between the center frequency to the adjacent frequency is one third octave. If I add three frequencies together, then that's one octave in total. Or like let's say three faders makes one octave. And as I said, if you look at the parametric EQ, Q factor value, 4.3 is equal to one third of octave in bandwidth ratio. Okay, uh, again, uh, have a read on uh, the link I've provided below. Uh, it explains uh, graphics EQ and parametric EQ in more detail and it gives, I mean it explains in the simplest method possible.